Earlier last week, we talked about a few things that you probably didn't know about within Black Ops Cold War, like the fact that there was a visible weapon prestige option that didn't actually work, that if you spawn late into a game, you get progress, if not the full progress towards your field upgrade immediately. That you can have multiple field mics at a given time, a handful of campaign Easter eggs like the Redeemer Magnum, locked away with some Steiner references, the zombies Easter egg and break on through, and a few other things more. But today, while we kickstart a weekend here, perhaps recovering from our food comas if you're in the States and had a nice Thanksgiving dinner yesterday, I figured we'd take a look at 10 more things that you may not know about in Black Ops Cold War. So as we go along, let me know how many of these did you know about? And also, if there's anything you'd like to add, feel free to share it in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, do be sure to hit that subscribe button as we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep you up to date with all things Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. So if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump into it. I want to start out with some rather cool Easter eggs, in my opinion. Black Ops Cold War, of course, takes place in the bubble between Black Ops and Black Ops 2 a large number of years in that gap, telling a story that doesn't nullify anything in the Black Ops universe's canon, but also doesn't offer a ton in the way of major revelations. The campaign, by all accounts, could have been its own separate standalone thing, but it is tied into the Black Ops universe, and the evidence of Hudson, Mason, Woods, and all do a job at reeling that in. For the most part, I think this game's storyline is kind of like El Camino for the Breaking Bad series, where theoretically it didn't need to happen, I'm not saying that it's not good, but it neither hurts nor strengthens the lore in place. It just adds to the narrative. And from a design perspective, that can sometimes be hard, but there's a few Easter eggs in multiplayer that do a decent job at bringing you into the universe of Black Ops, even if preserving canon and continuity can sometimes be a little tough. Now, for the first one, I want to talk about a Nuketown Easter egg, that being the Site A Easter egg. In the side garage on Nuketown, there's a few photos of the original from Black Ops 1, followed up by a site map next to it, where you see Site A and Site B. Now, if you don't pay any attention to this kind of stuff, you just jump right into games, that's totally fine, and it is what it is. It's not really anything that would really stand out to you. But it turns out that there is a secondary site, that being the Nuketown 84 in Black Ops Cold War. But the original site is the original Nuketown from Black Ops 1. So much so that that Black Ops ending outro cinematic for Nuketown actually seems to be canon at this point, where if you go either to the opposite side of the map or you fly around in theater mode, you can see off in the distance, there's a giant crater where the last Nuketown would actually have been, but has been since wiped off the face of the earth. Now, you can't really count on the realism perspective here of this. It's a video game. The proximity to that other site definitely would have wiped off this Nuketown as well, which if you try and think of it from an actual perspective, it is pretty funny to think that that would be fully standing like this one is, but it's a cool little one to again, tie in the continuity and the universe a little bit of Black Ops 1, where we are now picking up in 84 in the multiplayer. So a cool little Easter egg that if you were just jumping in and grinding out weapon levels you may not have noticed but provide some nice backstory for nuketown 84. another good easter egg for the backstory of black ops cold war is that of on the map cartel on the back spawn helicopter infill side there's a house right at the very corner of the map it's not a house many probably go in in either 6v6 or combined arms the action is usually more so up towards the middle of the map so if you've missed this i definitely don't blame you there's photos though in this house of Menendez on the wall, along with many other references throughout the map for long live Menendez and that the revolution has come. Now, what's interesting is that these ties deal with Raul Menendez, sure, but it actually provides a little bit more backstory on his father, whose home it actually likely is. Now, the photo of Raul on the wall is of younger Raul. The time and setting the game takes place in, in Black Ops Cold War, the established universe and lore would make Raul 17 at the time, so not quite to where we were in hearing his name much in the original Black Ops story arc. But his father, leader of the Menendez Cartel, fittingly also part of the name of the map, thus the land they also work on, he's detailed a little bit by some of the artifacts found around the house. It's no new entry into the Black Ops storyline that he was heralded as a hero, but the paper write-up confirms that, saying things like, it's hard to imagine a time when the Menendez last name did not inspire the immediate recognition, respect, and affection of all Nicaraguans. However, less than 15 years ago, Jose Luis Menendez was a working class man. Now, the interesting part here out of all of this, though, is the note, which, while we can't really discern too much of it, brings up a few questions that are pretty cool. One, it ties Menendez's father to an operative named Stitch, and also confirms that Menendez had an associate that was captured by the CIA and will be moving through the map of Miami. So, while this kind of opens up a little bit more questions and leads for some more outs that could be made throughout the year, in terms of a narrative direction in multiplayer, it is pretty cool to see these tie back into the original Black Ops story arc. Next up, a little Easter egg here that deals with multiplayer, very small so we can breeze past this one, is that the wild cards in create a class are actual like playing cards, correct? 
Well, if you take a look at the upper left corner of that, it actually says B05, Black Ops 5. The fifth entry into the Black Ops franchise, we have Black Ops 1, 2, 3, 4, and now Cold War being five. So a slight little notation here on those wild cards, which may go incredibly unnoticed, but is a cool little detail that if you find that, you may realize, oh, that's that's pretty cool to see. Jumping over into some other Easter eggs now dealing with campaign. This next one is one we mentioned in passing, but I want to bring to your attention more fully is that of the padlock in the safe house in the campaign. The safe house is a place where you go a couple of times throughout the campaign. There you can end up going to the evidence board, taking a look at side missions or progressing on into the next missions or just even chatting with the other operators in the storyline. But in one location, there's an area that's locked off by a padlock. Now you can go through a little Easter egg here to figure this out for yourself but it actually just ends up being the code of 112263. That being the date of the Kennedy assassination and is an interesting little callback and tie in with the brainwashing that Mason had within Black Ops 1. Another one we can kind of breeze through because it's kind of well known at this point here, but does set up implications for the future of not only the Black Ops universe, but also the Modern Warfare universe is that Imran Zakayev from the Modern Warfare universe is explicitly placed into desperate measures. The mission within Black Ops Cold War and the Thus, the Black Ops universe. Now, it's important to note that this is the new rebooted version and rebooted universe of Modern Warfare. It does not affect the original trilogy that we had played many years ago, but instead is a new variation of the modern universe that is now subsequently taking place in the Black Ops universe. So that's pretty cool. But another follow up here to that that builds upon that and brings over a little bit more is that Bubby from Burger Town is actually in Black Ops Cold War as well. In the mission Red Light, Green Light, he is one of those main focal points within the staging area where there's a live fire drill. Now, if you actually go over to him, you can actually interact with this with a big red button and he'll start to spout out a couple of audio lines some of which definitely are kind of raunchy, but a cool little Easter egg here bringing over some, again, universal lore from the Modern Warfare universe with Burger Town, but also Bubby from Advanced Warfare as the murder bot in Zombies. Now, the next few things actually apply to in-game things that you can see and maybe some stuff you may not have known about and also have been submitted by the community. Some stuff that I pulled from the comments, some stuff that are over on Reddit, and some stuff that overall just kind of fascinated me. For the first one here, as a follow-up from last week's video, Panic Protocol actually pointed out that we talked about the two-at-one-time sort of limit for the field mics, which are incredibly useful, but what if you want more? What if you want to control the entire map? Well, if you're lucky enough, you actually could. We talked about how you needed gearheads so that you could end up getting two of your field upgrades and also you can end up having a faster recharge time on them so that you can end up having the opportunity to place two at one time. But if you end up running Spycraft, you can actually hack other enemy equipment as well, meaning that you can take over other enemy field mics, which could be placed in opportune locations and could give you a ton of information that you otherwise would not have. Also then allowing you to have over two field mics active at a single time. So talk about getting all the information imaginable, seeing all those red dots show up on those field mics. That'd be kind of crazy. Now, the next one comes from Wokus59 over on Reddit in which Turns out you can actually shoot down a cruise missile. If you have impeccable timing to show for it and incredible aim, you can actually take that thing out mid-air. So it's something that I know I find myself always dying to cruise missiles. Anytime I see one come in and kill a teammate somewhat close to me, I kind of just look up in the air and I'm like, well, I accept my fate. So maybe next time I should try and shoot it before it takes me out. Interestingly enough, kind of as a follow-up for destroying streaks before they actually come in, if you end up seeing a care package drop ship quick enough, you can actually take that out with one Sigma rocket and deny players of their care package. So if you're fast, definitely some stuff to note here. Next up, coming from Gunner in the Grass, you ever wondered what happens when two air patrols go at each other? What happens if you call in two at the same time? Well, it turns out one will actually be destroyed, presumably the one that was called in slightly earlier, unless they were somehow on the exact same timing maybe they cancel each other out then at that point but maybe that's a new way to save your streak from going down if your teammate has one have them call that in as soon as you hear about it and finally the last thing we'll talk about that you may not have known about comes from reddit user meme 69420 for the memes man for the memes but he ended up sharing a clip of actually being able to take out a helicopter by punching it now, of course, he was dropping in into fire team, trying to get some challenges done, presumably for his rockets, trying to take out the streaks with the Sigma. And while he damaged it, he didn't get it completely out of the sky. That is until he drops past it and melees it at the same time midair, which actually credited him with taking out the helicopter. 
Pretty crazy if you ask me, but something pretty cool as well. But that's 10 things you may not have known about. Again, 10 additional things on top of what we talked about last week. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of these here? How many of these did you know firstly? And also, is there anything you'd like to share as well? Maybe we can do one more follow up here. Don't know how many more we can get out of this because we start to learn more and more, of course, as time progresses. So being a couple of weeks now into Black Ops Cold War, there's not a lot of things that may strike you as a really big surprise. If there is something, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and of course, Modern Warfare and anything else related to COD. We'll keep you up to date. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Frankly, live on both those. If you guys want to share up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace. Oh, 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 oh,